Today, there is a lot of concern about the health of our economy, and people are paying close attention to the economic news. We hear lots of numbers, but usually it's our gross domestic product or GDP that makes headlines. GDP is a measure of our national output, how much we produce in a given period. From year to year, rising GDP means that our economy is growing, and growth is taken as a sign of strength. As long as GDP is growing, things will get better. Growth means progress, right? For the country, and for you, and for me. But let's see, and let's look where it matters most for average people in everyday life. How about for our wages? Is GDP growth the answer? Here, the black line is our per capita GDP over the last 35 years or so. This is the amount of national income potentially available for every person, and this number is usually viewed as a leading indicator of a country's standard of living. The trend looks impressive. Our per capita GDP more than doubled. But look at the blue line. That's the income average people actually earned over the same period. The trend is basically flat, with a big gap opening up between GDP growth and personal income growth. Growth clearly does not equal progress where it matters most for most of us in our paychecks. How about the amount of work we do? Is growth making life easier? Here we see our work hour trend, the blue line, compared to GDP growth, and for the most part, they've risen together. Families with children worked roughly 700 more annual hours in 2000 compared to 1975. If we extended this graph back in history, we'd see a very different picture. Up until the early 1970s, economic growth was accompanied by declines in working hours, you know, the eight-hour day and the weekend. If growth means working more while earning less, what are we really gaining? But maybe growth has made us more economically secure. Actually, we are less secure in many ways. Take old age. The blue line is a measure of retirement coverage. What we see is that for all of our economic growth over the last 30 years, essentially half of the working age population has had no pension coverage beyond Social Security. After a steep decline in the 2000s, the pension coverage rate was approximately 45% in 2010, the lowest level since 1988 and 6% lower than in 1980. Growth is clearly not the answer for retirement security. Even more disturbing, Growth has left us more and more in debt. The blue line here is a measure of personal savings. Since 1980, personal savings has utterly collapsed, even going into the negative in the mid-2000s. Looking back, you could say that we pretty much borrowed our growth these last few decades. Little wonder that we ended up in a deep recession, wiping out $15 trillion in national wealth. Here's the point. GDP does not reflect progress if the growth is unsustainable. In this case, because it was financed by debt instead of earnings. Another trend is even more fundamental. The economy may be growing, but the benefits are going to fewer and fewer people. Here, we see how economic inequality has risen with GDP, almost methodically, year by year. We are more unequal now than at any time since the 1920s, despite doubling the size of our economy. We've had growth that divides our country instead of uniting us, with virtually all of the gains going to the top 20% of households, and most of the gains going to the top 5% or even 1%. How can growth be counted as progress if it does not unify but divides the nation? We could go a lot further. Many social indicators on poverty, on health, on social ills like incarceration, on civic engagement, show us a picture suggesting that growth is almost working against social welfare. Here, we have a measure called the Index of Social Health, combining many factors. What we see is a decline in social welfare beginning in the 1970s, and then really no net gain in social welfare even as GDP doubled after 1980. Shouldn't we measure our progress by how well people are doing? Environmental indicators reveal a similarly negative pattern. Here we see that our nation's biocapacity, our stocks of resources, and our capacities for absorbing waste is shrinking. This may be the very picture of unsustainable growth, yet all these years we've been celebrating the growth. If GDP hides and excludes and ignores so much, how can we really measure our progress? In fact, experts have developed many types of alternative indicators that bring us closer to reality. One is the Genuine Progress Indicator, or GPI, which starts with GDP, but adjusts the level of growth for as many as 26 factors of household, social, and environmental change. Over the last 50 years, a large and growing gap has emerged between GDP and GPI. Basically, we've expanded our economy without improving our overall well-being as a nation. It's also striking that the flattening GPI trend since the 1970s probably matches how most people feel about their lives. Not much progress, and for many, a real struggle to get by.
There's an old saying, you get what you measure. It really is true. By measuring growth while ignoring its costs, we've gotten what we measured, unsustainable growth and possibly a far less productive future. Yet America's at a crossroads, not a dead end. We just don't know which direction to go. For that, we need new indicators that better reflect our security, well-being, and sustainability, our real progress. And we need to push for implementation of new measures in our government and decision-making. To achieve the right things, we need to measure the right things. To find out more about the problems with GDP, the alternative measures, and the emerging global movement for alternatives, please go to Demos's Beyond GDP project at the link displayed here.